Yes, what we have done uh, already, like we have done, Mrs. Fitzgerald, uh, she takes care, takes over as Mrs. Pearson. Of course, the magic was used. So when Mrs. Fitzgerald had become Mrs. Pearson, then first of all, the daughters, uh, Doris comes, and uh, we come to know that she's already, you know, uh, moving about with a boy called Charlie Spence without taking permission from her mother. Uh, but uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald, you know, she points out that uh, that boy is not of, of any worth for her and uh, she should not try to be with him. Uh, but she, Mrs. Fitzgerald doesn't say this thing very directly. She tells her like even Mrs. Fitzgerald, she says that even I would not like to be seen dead with that boy means he's such a horrible boy. What are the two things about which Mrs. Fitzgerald talks about that Charlie Spence? Number one, he's buck teeth, means uh, his teeth are protruding out, appearance wise also not very good. And second, that, that is to be, you know, really focused, that is half-witted. You know, he is stupid, not intelligent. So uh, it's not, the, so here Mrs. Fitzgerald, who is playing the role of Mrs. Uh, Pearson, she's able to point out to this girl that uh, the boy with whom she's roaming about or is spending time, he's of no worth. Uh, basically children, when they are teenagers, they are very rarely able to make out like what is good for them or what is bad. So that's why it is very important that permission, the culture of permission should be there in the family. The culture of discussion should be there in the family. The culture of, uh, you know, counseling should be there in the family. But unless and until the children are uh, receptive, but, and more important, you know, uh, unless the parents, you know, have set that culture in the family, the culture like where the children are able to talk to their parents and the parents, you know, they are able to convince their children as to what is good or not for them. So in this family of Mrs. Pearson, this culture is totally, you know, invisible. This culture is not at all there. Mrs. Pearson knows that her daughter is moving about with a, with a worthless person but she never ever discussed it with her daughter because she felt it very offensive. She felt like her daughter would not like it. Mind it, it's not a matter of the children's liking something or not. It's a matter of children's whole life. Children might say that they are grown ups. Children might feel that they know they can take their decisions. And yes, the children should be given the liber liberty, but not to the extent that their whole future should be affected by that decision. So parents play a very crucial role in this play, uh, in this, you know, in children's life. So second, when the, so Doris, you know, she is given a good dose about her ways. So though we don't see Doris ever saying sorry for what she has been doing, but at least uh, she might have been able to, uh, she might have been able to like uh, realize like uh, maybe what Mrs. Pearson or her mother is saying, that is right. Because somewhere or the other, what you say to somebody, it, it has its impact. Okay, when somebody else tells you whether the person is, uh, you know, a worth of some worth or not, it actually matters. So then the boy Cyril comes. He's equally spoiled the way the daughter was. And he even threatens his mother that he would take something on his own from the kitchen. So is it a threat? This culture should be there in the family. Why can't children take something on their in, on from the kitchen? The children should have, if children talk about liberty and freedom, can't they have the liberty to go to kitchen and make something on their own and eat something on their own and also to offer to their parents? So we talk about the liberty where children can do the wrong things outside, but we don't talk about the liberty where children can at least make something for themselves in the kitchen. Right? So point is not that mothers are destined to be in the kitchens always. Anyone in the family can go to kitchen and make something for oneself and can offer to others also, the way mother does it. Okay, then, uh, so Cyril is also given a good dose. And finally, Mrs. Fitzgerald, she tells Cyril about his wrongdoings also. What wrong had he been doing? So Cyril had been spending his whole time in a race, in a horse races and gambling, you can say. And uh, the real mother, Mrs. Pearson, might also be knowing all this, but she never bothered to 
tell her son what wrong he had been doing, fearing that it might cause unpleasantness in the family. So if all mothers become like this, then I guess uh, like all children in this world might become spoiled. So mothers, it's not about the mother's uh, ability to talk. It's about the setting of culture in the family, which matters the most. So the culture should be set where children are able to talk to their parents, not able, children should talk to their parents about what they are doing and parents need to be there to counsel their children about what is to be done and what is not to be done. Or most importantly, the family culture uh, should be such that children themselves should be able to make out like what is good or what is bad. Okay, where the children are brought up in a very uh, congenial atmosphere or in an at atmosphere where the values naturally move, there the children very rarely go out of track, very rarely. If ever they go, they are helped to come back. So then even the husband, when he comes and uh, I guess we people were all shocked to see, like uh, this person was the one who had been uh, laughed at at the club. The people at club used to laugh at him and he never knew this. At the, the biggest shock comes to us that even uh, Mr. George's wife, Mrs. Pearson, even she knew this. Even son also knew this. But the, despite all this, you know, they never bothered to tell their father, like how come, how he's being, you know, uh, laughed at at the club. So these things are very shocking. How can family hide the reality from one's own family members? If it happens, then it's not a family. Okay, then here one is lost amongst strangers then. So it's a family of strangers, right? So the very family culture is not there. So all these three people, you know, they are given the right doses by Mrs. Fitzgerald as Mrs. Pearson. And finally, when Mrs. Pearson comes in, uh, she is also shocked to see the way her family is all in sixes and sevens, that is all disturbed. Uh, Cyril was, uh, Doris was crying. Cyril was, uh, you know, uh, having his, you know, uh, having something to eat on his own. And uh, my husband, you know, he was also very upset. He was annoyed. And then the biggest shock comes when uh, George, uh, you can say, unwelcomes this uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Basically, she was Mrs. Pearson only, but he unwelcomes Mrs. Fitzgerald. And here also he's given a treat that if, uh, if, Mrs., if Mrs. Pearson has any guest at home, then Mr. George should, number one, uh, wish that guest and then afterwards should not sit without permission. She must see to it like whether he should sit there or not. So these are also mannerisms. And finally, uh, uh, he must respect the guest. And Mr. George, when he... Initially, he tries to shout at the top of his voice, but is uh, what even, but very soon he is able to realize that that kind of thing will not work today because today Mrs. Pearson was not that Pearson whom he used to snub very easily, right? So the reasons we all know. Then uh, what would happen? Let's see. So this we had done. So George angrily, what's he got to do with this? So he had been like shouting at the top of his voice. And Mrs. Fitzgerald, I ought to have known. George, uh, you ought to have known. Why ought to you have known? Nothing to do with you, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Look, we are all at sixes and sevens here just now. So perhaps you'll excuse us. So just perhaps you will excuse us. He wanted Mrs. Fitzgerald to leave the house. Is this the way we talk to the neighbors or somebody else who comes to our house? So if somebody talks, then it is uh, sheer no, uh, ill mannerisms. So Mrs. Pearson will teach him manners, right? This we all read. So Mrs. Pearson uh, starting up savagely. Say that again, George Pearson. So George, uh, all right, all right. So George was, you know, snubbed. It was not uh, like uh, he was snubbed. The main thing is like he was taught a lesson, like how he must behave with the guest or, or with any anyone. Then Mrs. Fitzgerald, hello, Doris here. So then Dor Doris also enters and we find that Doris was, you know, all crying. She was upset. Uh, basically, Mrs. Pearson, she knows that her daughter had to go out that evening. Uh, 
uh, and she wanted her yellow dress. Her yellow dress was not ironed and moreover, she has been told that the boy was not really a good one. So now she could not tell this directly to her mother or to her family that she did not want to go with that boy. So she might have indirectly got, uh, got to know this, but now she is pretending as if she is, you know, in the process of getting ready and all. So then Doris, uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald, oh, what a pity, dear. Why have you? So she's asked, Mrs. Pearson, uh, the one who is Mrs. Fitzgerald, she asks her like whether she's going out or not. See this. Uh, don't look at me. Uh, I give it up. I just give it up. So George gives up, gives it up. Mrs. Pearson, answer her. Not Doris. I was going out with Charlie Spence tonight, but now I have called it off. So when Mrs. Pearson, the real one, wanted to know whether this girl is going out with Charlie Spence or not, then initially Doris insulted her by telling her, like, what you have to do with it? It's not your business. Let me manage it. But Mrs. Fitzgerald tells her to talk sensibly and to talk politely to her to the guest. So now this is what the Doris said. She said, I was going out with Charlie Spence tonight, but now I have called it off. Means now I have cancelled my plan of going out. Oh, what a pity, dear. Why have you uh, with a flash of temper? So Doris doesn't want to talk to the neighbor. So these kinds of spoiled children, you know, they never ever want to talk nicely with anyone. If they cannot talk nicely with mother, they cannot talk nicely with anyone. Uh, because if you must know, my mother's been going on at, uh, uh, at me, making me feel miserable and saying that he's got buck teeth and is half pitted. So what reason does Doris give for not going out? Because her mother told her that the boy is like this. So children, have you got it? Like, why doesn't she want to go today? Not because the mother told him this about the boy, but because she has realized this in the core of her heart, like the boy is like this. But she is blaming her mother. Okay, now Mrs. Fitzgerald, rather bolder to Mrs. Pearson. Oh, you shouldn't have said that. Now Mrs. Fitzgerald, the one who was actually Mrs. Pearson, she tells the, her uh, friend, like, why did you say something like this? Mrs. Fitzgerald, I'll manage my family, you manage yours. Grimly. Uh, ticking her off now, are you any? So ticking her off means, are you sending her out now or not? Who is Annie? Annie is Mrs. Pearson. So now George is asking his wife to send Mrs. Fitzgerald out. Mrs. Pearson. Even more grimly, they are waiting for you at the club, George. Don't forget. And don't you start crying again, Doris. So Mrs. Pearson is tackling both people at the same time. Mrs. Pearson, that is Fitzgerald. She says, uh, she tells Mr. George, like, why are you not going out? Your friends might be waiting to laugh at you. And Doris, don't start crying again. Now Fitzgerald getting up with sudden decision. That's enough, quite enough. So Mrs. Pearson, the real one, she is now, uh, she is not able to handle this kind of situation anymore. She cannot see her family being tortured like this. Then George and Doris stare at her bewildered. So to Doris, uh, to George and Doris. Now listen, you two. I want to have a private little talk with Mrs. Fitz. She corrects herself hastily with Mrs. Pearson. So I'll be obliged if you leave us alone for a few minutes. I'll let you know when we have finished. Go on. Please, I promise you that you won't regret it. There is something here that only I can deal with. So Mrs. Fitzgerald, who is acting like Pearson, she tells both George and Doris that they must leave for some time uh, because she want to talk to her friend for something. And uh, if they go, then they will be, uh, you know, benefited only. They won't have, have to regret this, George, rising. I'm glad somebody can because I can't. Come on, Doris. So George says, okay, so I guess it was uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald who was uh, telling George and Doris to leave so that they can uh, talk to Mrs. Uh, Pearson. So George says, okay, let me go. Let us go. At least somebody can today treat um, uh, mend our wife, uh, Mrs. Pearson. Now Mrs. Fitzgerald. Mrs. Fitzgerald, we must change back now. We really must. So, so I guess you people have got this, like why is Mrs. Fitzgerald saying to Mrs. Fitzgerald? 
So Mrs. Fitzgerald is actually the Mrs. Pearson. She tells Mrs. Fitzgerald that, that let us switch back Pearson. Why? Because this has gone far enough. I can see they are all miserable and I can't bear it. So why now Mrs. Pearson wants to come back to her orig original self? Because she cannot tolerate what is already going on. Pearson, a bit more of the same would do them good. A bit more of the same would do them good means a little bit of this kind of atmosphere in the family will change them. Okay. So making a great difference already. Means already changes are coming. She moves to the right of the table and sits. Now Mrs. Fitzgerald, that is Pearson. No, I can't stand any more of it. I really can't. We must change back. Hurry up, please, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Well, if you insist, yes, I do. Please, please. So she stretches her hands across the table eagerly and Mrs. Pearson takes them. Mrs. Pearson, quiet now, relax. So now they are switches, switching back with the help of all that uh, Arshata Dham and all. The, they carry out the same action as before, going lax and then coming to life. But this time, of course, they become their proper personalities. Now, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Ah, well, I enjoyed that. Mrs. Pearson, I didn't. Mrs. Fitzgerald, well, you ought to have done. Now listen. Mrs. Pearson, don't go soft on them again. So Mrs. Fitzgerald is giving Mrs. Pearson a warning. She says, okay. Now the final word is like, don't go soft on them again. Else it will all have been wasted. Means now if you will become soft with your family, then whatever the efforts I have put in, they'll all be wasted. I'll try not to, Mrs. Fitzgerald. They have not had as long as I would like to have given them another hour or two's enough rough treatment might have made it certain. Now, Mrs. Fitzgerald wanted two more hours at least, but Mrs. Pearson, I'm sure they'll be do better now, though I don't know how I'm going to explain. So Mrs. Pearson says that I have, now the family will be all right, though I cannot, I don't know what I'm going to explain. Now, Mrs. Fitzgerald, severely, don't you start any explaining or apologizing or you are done for. Means now don't start explaining like why you said this or why you said this. Don't explain, don't apologize. Otherwise, you will be there from where we started earlier. Now, Mrs. Pearson with spirit. Now she is very enthusiastic. It's all right for you, Mrs. Fitzgerald. After all, they aren't your husband and children. So Mrs. Pearson says like, uh, yeah, you can say this, this kind of thing because it's not your family. This is here where women go weak. Okay, so Mrs. Fitzgerald, impressively. Now you listen to me, you admitted yourself that you were spoiling them and they didn't appreciate you. Any apologies, any explanations, and you will be straight back where they were. And I'm warning you, dear, just give them a look, a tone of voice now and again to suggest you might be tough with them if you want it to be. And it ought to work. Anyhow, we can test it. How? So the point is, Mrs. Fitzgerald is finally warning her, like no apologies, no explanations. Only you have to give them a look, a tone of voice. That's it. Because you'll be asked later on, like how was Mrs. Fitzgerald able to mend the family? The answer would be uh, no explanations, no apologies. And she just give, gave them a look. She just had a proper tone of voice, right? So this is what she is suggesting her again. And she says like, do this, then you will get what you, you will ask them to do what you want. And anyhow, we can test it. Anyhow, we can test means, like if I am saying that you can make your family do what you want, we can have a proof, Mrs. Pearson, how? Well, what is, uh, what is that? Uh, what is it you would like them to do that they don't do? Stop at home for once. So Mrs. Fitzgerald says, okay, now you tell me, what do you want your family to do if they are at home? But they've never done it for you. So what is your, what is your desire? What, what do you always long for? Mrs. Pearson, yes. And give me a hand with supper. So, so what does Mrs. Pearson says? What does she want from the family? She wants that they should help her in making supper. Mrs. Fitzgerald, anything you would like them to do that you enjoy whether they do or not? 
so another thing is like what do you like doing but your family doesn't like likes or not that's a different issue but you want them to do with you so your person hesitatingly well yes i like nice game of rummy but of course i hardly ever have one except at christmas so the mother or the wife she has been always very fond of a play uh, a game of rummy but she never enjoyed it with her family it was only once at christmas otherwise this woman had never ever enjoyed in her life now mrs fitzgerald getting up that will do then she moves towards the door left then turns but remember keep firm you will or you will have it keep firm or you will have it means remain strict remain firm otherwise the things will all be wasted she opens the door calling hey ho you can come in now coming away from the door and moving right slightly quietly but remember remember a firm hand so mrs fitzgerald calls out to uh, doris and uh, uh, that uh, george and cyril she asks them to come back and she now leaves by and keeps on giving her warning even in the end like a firm hand remain firm now george doris and cyril file in through the door looking apprehensively at mrs pearson now three of them come inside and they are looking at mrs pearson very apprehensively why apprehensively because now they are making out like whether her mood is still like that or now is she fine uh, i am just off to let you enjoy yourself uh, so that woman goes mrs fitzgerald she says okay now i am going you people enjoy yourself the uh, family looks anxiously at mrs pearson who smiles much relieved this uh, they smile back at her so now when the family comes back they look at mrs pearson and they the moment they look at her her mrs pearson also smiles back, smiles so the whole family is relieved that at least now she is smiling so now her smile also matters the same woman whom nobody uh, otherwise for whom nobody ever bothered in life now that woman's smile is also mattering because now the children have been the family has been made to realize what they are without her so doris anxiously yes mother look at this the doris the one who is a most uh, you know spoiled girl the one who is terribly spoiled you know now the moment she finds her mother smiling uh, see look at her uh, dialogue yes mother now mrs pearson smiling seeing that you don't want to go out i tell you what i thought we would do mrs fitzgerald giving a final warning remember pearson nodding then looking sharply at the family no objections i hope so mrs pearson told her, uh, told this girl that uh, now i can see that you are not going out the, then uh, uh, will you do what i want you to do and i hope nobody has any objections now george humbly no no mother whatever you say so this might not be the george this might be the cyril i guess so cyril says no no mom whatever you say now mrs pearson smiling i thought we would have a nice family game of rummy and then you children could get the supper ready while i and uh, i have a talk with your father so what is mrs uh, pearson's uh, plan now like first they will have a game of rummy together four of them then afterwards both of the kids will go to kitchen and will make supper and meanwhile mother will sit with her husband and will have a talk now george firmly suits me george is husband and he says he is very happy now he says yeah yeah suits me he is very happy and he agrees he looks challengingly at the children what about you two now cyril hastily yes that's all right so even the son agrees very instantly now doris hesitatingly doris is a bit hesitating because for her going to kitchen and making something uh, is is something very very difficult but even then well i now mrs pearson becomes sharp what what speak up then uh, doris hastily oh i think it would be lovely if i go to kitchen and all so pearson smiling good bye uh, then mrs pearson smiling good bye mrs fitzgerald come again soon then mrs fitzgerald yes dear night all have a nice time mrs fitzgerald exits and the family cluster round mother as so the whole family you know clusters around mother and the curtain falls
so finally uh, the play is over thereby leaving it uh, leaving a message that if the mother becomes strict firm and uh, uses the right kind of tone then the children and husband have no then there is no point that the family doesn't listen to her so the family is now back to track and mother is also happy and respected okay that was all with this play okay did you enjoy the play okay now what you people will be doing is uh, this play prepare uh, go through the play again today i guess today is your test on tuesday okay i'll see your test schedule and please uh, prepare the test of this very play only so today there will be very simple questions from this play and we will be discussing some other uh, you know questions like whether this play is a satire how is this play a satire or what are the elements of humor in the play so those things will be discussing today and otherwise uh, the, do the general questions from this play prepare it okay thank you yes divanshi